right, let's talk about the cardiovascular system. Um, the components of any cardiovascular system are typically going to be a circulating fluid, which in the case of humans would be blood, uh, a pump, which in the case of humans would be the heart, and then a vascular system. The vascular system is basically the transport vessels, and there are three different kinds of blood vessels that we have in our bodies. Um, arteries, capillaries, and veins. Now, arteries, if as they branch off and get smaller and smaller, are going to be called arterioles, um, and then veins, as they get smaller and smaller, are called venules. But basically, those are the three um, kinds of blood vessels, are arteries, capillaries, and veins. Arteries carry blood away from the heart. They have a thick muscular wall and the arterial, arterioles are just smaller arteries. Um, the arterioles, have, their diameter can be regulated by the nervous system, and that's kind of how your brain controls your blood pressure, is by regulating those arterioles. The arterioles are gonna branch into capillaries, uh, which are very, very narrow microscopic tubes um, with a wall that's composed of only one layer of cells, so it's a very thin wall. Capillary beds consist of many interconnected capillaries, and they are very, very common in humans, uh, such that all of your cells in the body are within 60 to 80 micrometers of a capillary. Um, so this is how blood um, gets to your cells and, and nutrients and oxygen get to your cells are through capillary beds. Um, the capillaries are so narrow that red blood cells can pass through, or they, they pass through in a single file line. And this allows for exchange of nutrients and waste molecules uh, across their very, very thin walls. Venules and veins will collect blood from the capillary beds and then take it to the heart. Uh, first, the venules drain the blood from the capillaries and then they join together to form a vein. The wall of a vein is much thinner than that of an artery. Uh, they don't have that muscle layer. Valves within the veins point in a single direction, and they point or open towards the heart. And what this does is it prevents uh, blood from backflowing down the vein. So if the blood tries to go back down the vein, um, those valves snap shut and prevent that from happening. In the cardiovascular system of humans, the pumping of the heart is what keeps blood moving in the arteries, and then skeletal muscle contraction pressing against the veins is what keeps blood moving in those veins. Here's a picture where you can kind of see that in action. So this could be like a, a calf muscle or something, but um, basically if you have that muscle and it's relaxed, then the veins are, are open, and then if it's contracted or tensed, it squeezes um, the veins closed because they have such thin walls, and then that blood is pushed forward. Uh, and remember, those valves keep it from flowing back. The human heart is a cone-shaped muscular organ, and it's about the size of your fist. It's located between the lungs, directly behind the sternum or the breastbone, and it's tilted so that the apex, which is the pointed end, uh, is oriented slightly to the left. The heart has four chambers. The left and right atria, the singular of that is atrium, so right atrium, um, are thin-walled upper chambers and then the left and right ventricles are the thicker walled lower chambers. The right ventricle is larger than the left ventricle. Uh, the heart also has four valves uh, in between the ventricles and then also in between the uh, atria, or sorry, in between the atrium and the ventricles and in between the ventricles and the outflow tract. Um, and those valves direct the flow of blood and prevent it from going backwards. And typically if you have a heart murmur, a lot of times that's because one of those valves is faulty and it's allowing backflow of blood in the heart. The two valves between the atria and the ventricles, so the right A valve and the left AV valve, um, are called the atrioventricular valves or the AV valves. The AV valve on the right side is called the tricuspid valve because it has three flaps or cusps. And then the AV valve on the left side is called the bicuspid or the mitral valve because it has two flaps and those two flaps look like um, a, a mitre hat. Basically. So here's a picture you can see the tricuspid valve with its three flaps and then the mitral valve with its two flaps. Also on this picture, um, notice the aortic valve and the pulmonary valve, which we're going to talk about next. 
but they have three uh, cusps as well. So the remaining two valves, the aortic valve and the pulmonary valve, are also called, uh, as a group, the semilunar valves, and their flaps resemble half moons. The pulmonary uh, valve lies between the right ventricle and the pulmonary trunk, and that's going to be basically, um, the pulmonary trunk is going to eventually lead to the lungs. And the aortic uh, valve lies between the left ventricle and the aorta, and then the aorta pumps blood to your body. Okay, so let's look at the path of blood through the heart. Um, we're going to start with the superior and the inferior vena cava. And you can see those on the left-hand side of the diagram. Um, they are bringing blood into the right atrium, and they're basically draining all of the blood in your body. So that is oxygen-poor blood, and it's really high in carbon dioxide because it's coming from your body. The right atrium sends that blood through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. And then the right ventricle sends that blood through the pulmonary valve into the pulmonary trunk, which will lead to the lungs. In the lungs, the blood will pick up oxygen and get rid of carbon dioxide, and it's going to return to the heart by way of the pulmonary veins, which enter into the left atrium. The left atrium sends blood through the mitral valve into the left ventricle, and then the left ventricle pumps the blood through the aortic valve into the aorta, which basically distributes it um, to the rest of the body. So two key concepts about the path of blood flow uh, through the heart. The left side of the blood, or the, sorry, the left side of the heart receives blood from the lungs, so that means it's going to be highly oxygenated blood, and then pumps it to the body. Whereas the right side of the heart receives blood from the body, which means it's going to be low oxygen, and then pumps it to the lungs. The human cardiovascular system includes two major circular pathways, the pulmonary circuit and the systemic circuit. Let's look at the pulmonary circuit first. Um, in pulmonary circuit, the oxygen-poor blood from the regions of the body is going to collect in the right atrium and then pass to the right ventricle, which then pumps it to the pulmonary trunk. The pulmonary trunk carries the blood to the lungs. Um, as the blood passes through the pulmonary capillaries, the carbon dioxide diffuses off and the oxygen diffuses in. Let's take just a minute to look at how that happens. So your trachea, or your windpipe, is going to branch down once it gets into your chest cavity. It's going to branch into bronchi, and then those bronchi further divide into bronchioles, which are kind of smaller tubes, and then the bronchioles end in alveoli. Alveoli are very thin-walled, and they're encased in a capillary network, as you can see kind of in that zoomed-in picture on the right-hand side there. Um, so the oxygen that you breathe in is going to diffuse uh, down the trachea, down the bronchi, down the bronchioles, into the alveoli. And then from the alveoli, which they're very thin walled, the oxygen actually diffuses across into the capillaries. So the oxygen is going from an area of high concentration in the alveoli to an area of low concentration in the capillaries. The hemoglobin, which is inside your red blood cells, is going to bind to that oxygen to help carry it in the bloodstream. Now, the carbon dioxide um, is going to also diffuse from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So the carbon dioxide is diffusing from inside the capillaries where your um, heart has already kind of pumped it from your, your organs, from your blood, to the lungs. So it's got a lot of carbon dioxide. It's going to diffuse um, out of those capillaries into the alveoli. And then when you exhale, you breathe that out. So the last little bit of the pulmonary circuit is the oxygen-rich blood returning to the left atrium of the heart through the pulmonary veins. So realize that not all veins carry oxygen-poor blood. That's not the definition of a vein. Technically, the definition of a vein is it's carrying blood to the heart. Um, most of those veins do have oxygen-poor blood. However, the pulmonary veins are very rich in oxygen because they've just come from the lungs and they picked up all that oxygen before going to the heart. So the systemic circuit is kind of the other half. Um, the aorta and the vena cava are the major blood vessels in this circuit. Uh, in general, for any organ in your body, um, it's going to drain um, through the vena cava um, and get into the heart. And the oxygen-rich blood is going to go from the left atrium, remember that came from the lungs, to the left ventricle to the aorta. The aorta pumps it out um, and kind of branches off into a lot of little branches. And those branches into the organs. 
um, and then we kind of get into the whole capillary bed and all that where the gas and nutrient exchange occurs. And then the vein from that organ is going to return the O2 poor blood to the vena cava, and the vena cava are going to enter the heart at the right atrium. Let's talk a little bit about capillary exchange. So blood that enters a capillary at the arterial end is very rich in oxygen and nutrients. Um, when it leaves at the venial end or the venous end, it's going to be depleted of those oxygen and those nutrients. And the way that happens is that the arterial end of the capillary bed, um, at that end, the blood pressure is quite high. So it actually forces out the water and the nutrients that exit the capillary at this end and get to the cells and get to the inner cellular fluid. At the venial end of the capillary bed, blood pressure is much lower, so water tends to move back into the capillaries at that point, but it leaves behind the oxygen and the nutrients and all the things that the cell needs. The substances that leave a capillary will contribute to the tissue fluid, which is the fluid between your body's cells. Um, red blood cells and then most of the proteins are going to be too big to diffuse into the tissue, so they stay in the capillary. Almost the same amount of fluid that left the capillary bed at the beginning, at the arterial end, returns to it at the venial end, but not 100%. So some of that excess tissue fluid um, stays in among the cells, and what happens is that is collected by the lymphatic capillaries, and um, the tissue fluid contained within that, those lymphatic vessels is now called lymph. And when we talk about your lymphatic system, we'll kind of discuss what happens with that and how that works. But just kind of remember that, that there is some extra tissue fluid, and that's going to be collected by the lymphatic capillaries, and that's going to be called lymph. 